So, did you see that short yesterday where this guy talked at lightning speed for 60 seconds explaining about why you should use REM instead of pixels? Well, that guy was me trying to explain in 60 seconds a really important topic to you. This is Vite's default page. Everything seems fine, but it does not if you're a visually impaired user because these people change the default font size of their browser. So here I am taking a little bit more time to explain this topic to you to make sure that you fully understand what this is actually about and why it is super important to know as a front-end engineer. The first thing to start with is pixels are the unit that your browser uses to print anything on the screen. Even if you use REM or EM values, eventually your browser will always calculate it to pixels. However, until now, you might have always used pixels because pixels are the easiest to use, they're the default, and why would you care to do anything different? Because if we look at the feed's default homepage, which we see here, then everything looks totally normal, right? But that's wrong. There is one thing that actually is a huge problem with this code. And that is actually the message I want to convey today. So let's dive in by have a look at Vite's default project setup and take it from there. Let's go. There is a portion of the users using your website that might not see perfectly well. They're visually impaired. And you know what these users do? They change the base font size of their browser. And if we do that by going into our settings and then appearance and setting font size to very large, and we go back to the website, nothing changed. And you know why? That is because we are using pixel values and the browser accepts these pixels as the fact. It's just what it uses. And this is exactly the benefit REM brings. REM is actually always relative to the root element of your page, which usually is the HTML node. But that means that if the value of your root HTML node will change, that everything on the page will change with it. So if your user wants to have a bigger page because they see a little bit less good, then the website should adhere to that and it should not stay this way. So REM calculates the value based on the font size of the HTML node. So that means in this case that one REM equals 16 pixels. So if you want to, for example, create a size of 20 pixels, you need to multiply this by 16. But that's a little bit awkward to do. So usually what you actually do is set the font size of the HTML node to 10 pixels. Because if you set it to 10 pixels, then you know 2REM equals 20 pixels. That's a lot easier to work with. So make your life easy and definitely set 10 pixels as the base font size. So after we've set the base font size to 10 pixels, we can go ahead and change the size of the H1 to 5.2 REM and the panning to 1.5 REM and 1.9 REM and the font size to 1.6 REM. And by doing so, again, you see that everything is still 100% the same, even though we are actually currently at a font size large, so we did not achieve a thing. And you know why that is? Because if you change anything in the base font size, it does not override what you specify as the HTML font size. So instead of using a hard-coded pixel value again in your HTML node, you should actually use a percentage there. And by default, the HTML node is 16 pixels. So it actually means that 100% would equal 16 pixels. So if you want to use 10 pixels as your base font size, simply because it makes the calculations a lot easier, then you would make your font size 62.5%. And if we now go back to our website, we see that everything suddenly became bigger. Let me change it back. And it's smaller again. Every size right now that is an REM value is relative to the value the user specified as their base font size. So if a user is visually impaired and wants everything to be just a little bit bigger so they can read it better, it will work. There are actually a few things that I did not convert into REM values. For example, if we look at the border radius of the button, most of the time it's, I think, mainly a design question you should ask yourself. Because the question is, if everything becomes bigger, for example, the font size, should also this border radius increase as well in radius? Maybe we could make this 0.8 REM, but it means that if the user scales the font size and the border radius will also get bigger. In this case, the change is minimal because it's not a huge difference in font size we're seeing here. But you can imagine that perhaps for a HR line that divides a page that you do not want that to go from one pixel to 
two pixels or three pixels simply because it's an HR line. So based on this, it's always good to ask yourself, should this change in size if the user changes their base font size as well? And then there's actually one thing left because besides REM, we also have EM. What, what's that? Should you still use that? Well, in my opinion, not really. I rarely needed to use it. What REM actually does is something that's perhaps really nice, but also super complicated. It just makes calculating whatever the pixel size is a lot harder. The way it calculates its font size is by looking at the value of its parent and also its grandparent. So it will include both of those font sizes in calculating what should be the new value. So let me show this in an example to you. If we go to the HTML page and add another section in here, which is a div with class equals prompt parent in there is a div that has class parent. And then we have an H2 that says, hello, this is an EM text. We now go back to our CSS and add this grand parent class name as well as the parent class and the H2. We could, for example, say the font size of this H2 equals 2 EM and change our appearance back to the medium font size and then inspect this page and check the computed property of this H2. We see that it has a font size of 20 pixels, which is actually two times the value of the HTML node. 2 times 10 equals 20 pixels. However, if we, for example, set our grandparent to 20 pixels, we see that this value now became 40 pixels because 2 times 20 equals 40. But now comes the complicated part. If I change the font size of the direct parent to EM as well, you see that suddenly it becomes twice as big. And that actually calculates into 80 pixels. Why? Because it takes a look at the grandparent, which is 20 pixels, then multiplies the 2EM for the font size, which becomes 40 pixels, then multiplies for the H2 with 2EM again, which becomes 80 pixels. So maybe in some edge cases, it could be really useful to have a size that is relative to a parent size. But most of the times, in my opinion, you should just use REM because it's way easier to calculate, especially if you set your root HTML node to 10 pixels, you always know what 2REM is, whereas 2EM can mean literally anything. You really need to calculate and see the values of the parents before you know what it will end up as. So as a final conclusion, why is this useful, you say? I hope you already know this by now, but it's super important for accessibility. Also, visually impaired users really deserve a very good web experience. And it's our task as front-end engineers to make sure that they do. And especially if it's this easy to implement, as soon as you take it into account when starting a project, it's, it's literally a no-brainer to do this. So let me know once you implement this in your own project and let me know how it worked out. Thank you so much for listening. Please leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.